I recently came across a secondhand store or like a thrift shop or like an antique store, I like to call it, and I came across this beautiful sunflower wind charm. And it kind of needs a little bit of a revamp because as you can see, the paint is, has peeled off or scratched off. Um, the, the plastic parts here are broken and the color has faded. It used to be that like blue color and now it's this funny green. And um, yeah, so I actually asked my brother to laser cut some wooden pieces for me in the place of those parts. So I've got a circular disc here and a little rectangular piece that already has holes drilled into it. There is no like sensor thing for the wind charm uh, that is missing. <laughs> okay, but let's get started. So I'm going to get started by putting the rest aside and I'm going to uh, start working on painting these parts. So I'm just going to grab my palette here and I'm just going to start putting some colors down. So I'm just going to grab my yellow. Love it on the air. <laughs> and some blue. I'm just going to mix the blue and the yellow together to create this, this light green. And then I'm just going to take my wooden circular disc here and I'm just going to apply a nice even coat of paint across the top of it. I'm just going to paint this little rectangular piece as well, which is very fiddly to, to how tiny it is. Okay. So I'm just going to set those aside and I'm just going to start putting some green on
just going to rinse off my paintbrush now and I've put some brown paint on my palette and I'm now going to start filling in the center of the sunflower to form this beautiful seeds of the sunflower. So as I said, I'm just going in with some brown here, just filling in the center. And I'm just going to grab some black paint here, just going to put that on the palette, and um, I am just going to take a little bit of black and brown, and I'm just going to make, um, I'm just going to make the brown a little bit darker, just so that I can create some shading in the center of the sunflower. So I'm just filling in the very center of the seeds or of the sunflower. There's like a little circle in the center of the middle of the seeds. Um, so I'm just filling in that with the with my little mix of the black and the brown. And then I'm just going to also just like outline the edge of the seeds or the seeded area just to give it that like extra shading so that the, the outer side of the, the seeds could pop. Okay, so now the center of the sunflower is done. And now I'm just going to uh, just get some yellow and, uh, and a little bit of red on my palette as well. And now I'm just going to start filling in the petals of the sunflower. So I'm just going to take some yellow and I'm just going to just paint over the petals and try and cover up as much of the removed paint as possible or the black areas.
Okay, so I'm just gonna go back now and just fill in the leaves of the sunflower. So I'm just gonna grab some blue and I'm just gonna start painting the leaves of the sunflower. So there are actually like little creases or like little indents on the leaves. That, that's like the veins of the leaves. So I'm just going in in there with some dark blue just to give the leaves that those highlights and the shading. Already the leaves are beginning to look so much better, don't you think? So again, I am just applying glue to all of like the little veins or the cracks of the leaves and also um, like by the petals to create those shading. Okay, and this is what the sunflower looks like now. So as you can see, it's beginning to take shape. You can see the seeds in the center now. <laughs> They're so different. So I actually went in and uh, continued to fill in the petals of the sunflower. So uh, I'd mix a little bit of red and some yellow together and um, I went in to like the behind petals and I'd put a little bit of red or like orange um, between the petals um, to give it some shading and then I also went in with black in between the petals in the front to give it that shading just to give it that shading that I should put it that the that some of those petals are overlapping and now I am just going in with some wax to add in some highlights to the petals so now this is what the finished sunflower looks like I have painted both sides now and I basically repeated the same process on the other side. Yeah, so now we are going to go back to um, the wooden pieces now. So now I am just mixing some more green, but I'm going to make the green a lot more darker. So uh, I'm going to add more blue to my yellow because I really want I really want the, the wooden pieces to be a lot more darker So now I'm just going to start applying the green paint to the wooden circular disc and again I'm just going to apply the paint in a nice even coat. I'm 
also just going to paint the little wooden the little wooden rectangular piece also this beautiful shade of green just going to paint the other side of the wooden disc as well again also in an even coat And now I'm going to get out my hair dryer and just blow these little pieces dry because, yeah, I don't feel like waiting. I'm impatient. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna blow this thing dry. So now since the sunflowers, the sunflower and the little pieces are all dried and painted, I'm now going to take my, my spray on varnish here 
and I am just gonna just spray it on to the sunflower and the wooden discs. This is just to seal it and just to protect it from the weather. And then I'm gonna get my trusty old hair dryer again and then just blow it all dry. Now that, it, that that side is dry, we are now going to take our varnish and again spray the other side. As you can see the varnish has given the pieces a nice beautiful shine as well so that's a bonus isn't it <laughs> so again I'm just gonna draw the varnish again with my trusty old hair dryer so I'm just gonna give it a blow and look at how shiny it looks it looks so beautiful I love the way this looks So I got my tapestry needle out and I just threaded my tapestry needle and yeah, no, I'm just gonna thread um, thread the yarn through the little hole at the top of the sunflower. And then I am just gonna join it together with a little knot or a French knot, whatever this knot is called. Now I am just cutting another piece. So now I've just cut another piece of yarn and now I'm just threading it through the hole at the bottom of the sunflower and I'm going to like I cut a really long piece so that it'll be long enough to thread it through the little rectangular piece and through the little round disc. So as you can see I've threaded um, the one side through, um, I've threaded the one side of the thread through the one side of the rectangle and I'm taking the other side of the thread and threading it through the other side of the rectangle. Now I am just going to knot the two pieces together or the knot the two threads at the bottom and I'm just adjusting the length of, um, of the, the thread at the top of the rectangular piece to like the half that I want it. So again I have just knotted the two, the two, uh, the two threads of yarn together 
just so that that little rectangular piece does not move. And then I'm going to take the one side of the yarn or the other one of the side of the yarn and um, I am now just going to thread it through the circular disc. So I've threaded it up, up and through the one hole and then down and through the other hole. Okay. And then I'm going to go back down one of those holes from the little rectangular piece and then I'm going to like pull the little wooden disc away from the rectangular piece just to give it the half that I need and then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side so I'm going to take the other thread or the other yarn and I'm going to thread it onto my needle here And then I'm going to thread it through one of the holes on, on the circular wooden disc and I'm going to thread it through the next hole. And then I am going to thread it back down through the other hole in the rectangular piece as you can see here. Again, I'm going to make sure that it sits at a nice part that I'm happy with. So you just want to adjust the circle. Um, or the, the little disc and the rectangular piece um, just so that it sits nicely and that it hangs like in the center and then yeah I'm just gonna tie the two strands again just to just to make sure it does not come undone and then I'm just gonna snip the tail ends and that is what it looks like and I'm quite happy with that so let's move on to attaching little charms so again I'm just going to take a length of yarn and cut a piece and then just thread my darning needle So I'm going to thread um, the yarn through the through the hole in the disc and then through the hole in the wind charm and then out the other side of the wind charm and then up through the next hole in the wooden disc. And then I am just going to adjust the length of, of the wind charm that I need it to be and then I'm just going to secure that in a nice tight knot.
and then you'll just basically repeat that for all of the other wind chimes starting from the second highest down to or the second longest down to the shortest one. So now this is what it looks like and it is beginning to take shape now. So now we are going to add the little nut to the center. So again I'm just going to cut some yarn that is the length that I want it to be. And then I'm just going to thread that onto my needle. center hole in the, the wooden disc and then I will also thread the other side of that of the yarn um, through this the hole in the, in the wooden disc and then I will tie a knot at the top so much better now with everything put together and live the way it looks it's so beautiful so now I'm just neatening, neatening everything up so I'm just cutting all of the strands at the top off
And now, for the reveal. And this is what the wind chime looks like. Isn't it just beautiful? Look at how bright and vibrant it is now compared to like what it was before. It's just so beautiful. I love it. So tell me, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below this video. And thank you guys for watching. 